Hello everybody and welcome back to the next episode of BTA Bite Size. Today's video is going to be another top tips video. This time there's going to be 10 and this time they are going to be more focused around doing the actual missions. There's going to be the sort of first three or four, the sort of things you want to be doing at the Argo screen and then we'll jump into a battle and we'll give you some more tips on how to make your life a little bit easier and things you need to look out for uh, when you're actually in the battle to try and help you guys get through your first couple of missions and start getting some salvage. Uh, before I do, however, if you do like the video, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to leave a thumbs up and don't forget to come and see me on twitch uh, health permitting i do stream on a monday wednesday and friday so obviously if you want any more battle tech content come and see me on there but without further ado let's jump straight into the first tip hi guys this is actually few to me here sorry for the interruption before the video gets started um i just wanted to um i've just been uh, started editing the video and i have noticed a few of the clips uh my webcam uh, it goes extremely chuggy. Uh, I just wanted to address this at the beginning of the video now, um, it's just so you don't start panicking that the, the video has gone wonky. Um, I am ha having quite a few PC problems right now, and it is causing issues with the recording. The audio is fine, and as far as I can see, the gameplay is fine. Uh, it's just my webcam has kind of gone a bit weird. Uh, the webcam recording has gone a bit weird. So uh, don't panic. Um, you know, the video is fine. It's not, it's not whatever device it is you're watching it on. It's all on me, unfortunately. I'm in the process of trying to build a new PC for all of this, but at the moment, I've just got to deal with what I've got. Uh, so yeah, ap apologies for that, and um, hope you enjoy the video, and let's get straight to it. And tip number one, pilot training. Uh, what I mean by this is actually decide what roles you want each pilot to have. Remember, none can be a jack of all trades. Even if you max them all out to 10 each, there are going to be some pilots that are better at some things than others. That's kind of the whole point of the skill system. So just go through your pilots, allocate them roles. I would say you want at least two uh, scout pilots and again by that I mean a pilot that actually has unlocked the sensor lock ability um, target prediction is okay but the sensor lock is going to be more valuable to you and it doesn't use morale and stuff like that which we'll be coming into later uh, i will be going a lot more in depth into pilot skills um, in a later video but i will say sensor lock is going to be your friend massively so i would say you want at least two pilots with that um, and then for the rest it's pretty much down to you whether you want to you know build a melee pilot or anything like that uh, another tip for that is um, don't forget that your main character that you created in the screen is actually immortal and cannot be killed so any mech that you use that's either light on the armor or is going to be more sort of in the fray or the one that's going to you know you're worried is going to take the most damage make sure you put your main pilot in there because no matter what happens he can't be killed with that, on to number two. And tip number two, weapon spam. Um, this is building on the earlier uh, top tips video that I did where I said to go in and optimize your mechs. By the way, if you haven't watched it, I'll drop a link down below. I suggest you, you know, hop down there and go and have a look at that as well. Um, too too much temptation to mount the, as many big gu like you know big guns on your on your mechs as possible. Obviously, you're going to be quite limited to what you do, depending on how you chose your playthrough. Uh, but honestly, going for lots of smaller weapons is going to be better for you early on than taking one big one. If you have like an AC10 or an AC5 that might do 45 damage, uh, but only has a 10% hit chance then that is not going to be as good as fitting sort of eight medium lasers in its place. It, you know, you've got an AC5 that takes up eight tons if you've got the mech can carry it. Obviously, I appreciate that hard points permitting, but for example, eight medium lasers... Uh, not only the medium lasers themselves have a bonus accuracy, uh, you've obviously can mount more of them heat permitting but for example if you had the weight and you had the heat and you had a choice of either an ac5 or you could mount eight medium lasers eight medium lasers is going to do a hell of a lot more damage than one ac5 they're also going to be infinitely more reliable and they have obviously the lasers have a bonus in, uh, inherent accuracy buff anyway so the medium lasers which you're going to be encountering a lot and the large lasers you're going to be encountering a lot have all got a plus one base bonus accuracy if you've got them in a mech in the arms then you have a plus one accuracy for the arm uh, for the lower arm actuator as well so 
Try and make sure that your weapon systems, if possible, are mounted in the arms for the extra accuracy. And early on, I'd advi advise avoiding the ballistics. You've got to deal with recoil and all stuff like that. So just stick with the lasers for now. Uh, it's going to make your life easier. Also, bear in mind that certain ballistics will not fire in a melee situation as well, which you're probably going to be doing a lot early on. So that's more damage you're missing out on. So uh, also focus on mechs that have as many uh, sort of support slots as well, because you can mount quite a fair amount like the mongoose here. Uh, you know, we've got like four support slots here. We can mount. Um, I would personally avoid flamers and go for more sort of like small lasers or machine guns uh, for the crit damage later on. Um, but yeah, la lasers are kind of where you want to go early on because they just the accuracy, extra accuracy is going to help you out a ton. And next tip is make sure you pick the simple missions. And when I say simple, I mean the ones that are not going to have multiple objectives that you have to deal with or multiple different sets of targets you've got to worry about. Uh, just keep it nice and simple. So the missions you really want to be going for early on are uh, things like battle, things like uh, recovery, which basically means you've just got to get your mechs to, into like a square. Same for capture bases. Uh, so yeah, like battles, assassinates, stuff like that. That's what you really want to be doing. You basically, all you need to worry about is killing everything on the battlefield and you haven't got to worry about anything else. You don't want to be doing ambush convoys. They're a pain, especially early on, because you have to deal with a lot of very light, very maneuverable and very high evasion targets. Um, uh, things like uh, escort missions uh, can be a pain because you've obviously got to try and keep the friendly AI alive and they're not always the smartest uh, whilst trying to navigate to a point and defend, uh, defend them and stuff like that. Likewise, attack and defend. There's a lot going on. There's an enemy base to deal with. There's the incoming Vanguard. There's extra uh, drops coming in. Uh, not only that, you've got to keep the base alive. There's a lot going on with it. So anything that's sort of like massively complicated... Uh, so like I said, you want um, battle, assassinate, recovery is uh, is a good one. And uh, you also want uh, things like capture base, uh, anything that's attack or defend, ambush convoy or whether it just ignore it. Uh, also, little bonus tip, always, always, always take maximum salvage. It will make you more money in the long run than taking the maximum payment. The only caveat to that is if it's a dual mission and that means that you have like a one-on-one -on -one battle with another mech then uh that is the only time i will say go for the maximum payment because usually your salvage max salvage will only be like one anyway and it will make you more money actually taking the maximum payout instead but always 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 take the maximum salvage you can it's gonna make things a little bit easy for you and the next tip, moving on into the more battle orientated ones, is use your pilots in the right order. What I mean by this is any pilot that has the sensor lock ability or any pilot that is going to be using melee, you want to be using them first. The reason being is they will make it easier for your follow-up mechs to actually hit the targets because they have already either been sensor-locked, made unsteady, etc. It's going to make your life a lot easier trying to land those hits from later on. Uh, also, just a little caveat to that, if you're going to be meleeing a mech, um, then you kind of don't really want to be using sensor lock on that specific mech, really, uh, because the I will go into more detail in the next tip, but uh, if you manage to make the mech unsteady with a melee attack, it reduces, it gives you a diminishing return on your sensor lock. You might want to use a sensor lock on something else that is uh, going to have evasion that needs removing or you need the bonus accuracy for. So again, it's using your pilots in the right order. So it's making it a sort of melee, sensor lock, and then follow up with everything everybody else that's just going to be shooting their weapons because they're going to have a much easier time because you've already sensor locked or made the un, um made you know made the enemy guy unsteady which moves us quite nicely into the next point and that next point is kick everything um <laughs> i say specifically kick for very very good reasons uh main one being that any kick that connects uh, to the enemy mech will instantly make it unstable. That means that that mech will lose all of its evasion. This means it will make it much, much easier for you to do your follow-up on the with you, you with you guys, obviously, that are sort of coming in and shooting later. 
Uh, with a, also a caveat to that, if you can get in the rear arc, that is going to be great because what that means is, is once you do your kick, if you have any follow-up weapons to fire, like we have here, we have three, uh, two medium lasers, two small lasers, they will hit in the rear arc. There's less things for them to shoot at, so the damage is going to be spread less. Uh, so yeah, kick, kicks in the kicks in the back are kind of where you want to go if you can. Um, don't be fooled by these numbers here, where you can see 35% uh, hit chance for the medium lasers and 99 for the smalls. What will happen is when that mech becomes unsteady, those figures will automatically change to 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 go with the fact that you are now shooting at an unsteady target. Uh, so, you know, don't worry about those. But kick is also extremely good because it only targets the legs. Uh, taking out the legs early on is a good way of gaining your salvage. It's going to be the easiest and most consistent way for you to do so. So continually keep focusing kicking the legs. Bear in mind the weapons that you fire after will not automatically focus the legs. They will just follow the normal um, hit tables that they are following depending on which arc you are in. So that is why I say go for the back shots uh, because they are, you know, there's less, you know, you know there's less um, targets for them to shoot. Um, but yeah, kick everything. Don't use charge. Charge is going to reflect damage back on you. And when you're early on, you're going to be in mechs with not a lot of armor. So, and your pilots aren't going to be able to take a lot of stability damage. So you really want to be avoiding that if you can help it. And punches just don't really do enough damage to be warranted. If you've got a physical weapon, great. Uh, you will get bonus accuracy, especially if you've got sort of lower arm actu actuators and hands and things. But early on, really kick everything is the way you're going to be going. Not only that it's going to make dealing with vehicles a lot easier because stamping on the vehicles uh, you do i think it's 180 percent melee damage to the vehicles so if you for argument's sake you have a hundred melee damage when you stamp on a vehicle it's actually going to do 180 so dealing that is dealing with vehicles early on is a lot easier if you just run around and stamp on them that's kind of really what you want to do and that's the easiest way to deal with them in that respect Uh, moving on from that then takes us quite nicely into target lines this is something um, that probably early on you're not really going to understand a, a great deal about uh, what this what these actually are is uh, depending on which, which arc you target your the enemy mech from they will be a different color as you can see there we have a blue and a red and if we move around here we have a green uh, this that basically indicates what arc your mech is firing at the enemy mech in. So the red lines means you're firing at the front arc, which means your hit table is going to be the entire front eight positions of the mech. And eight, one, two, three, yeah, eight, eight positions of the mech. Sorry, brain went a bit funny. Um, and... Yeah, so you've obviously got a lot more different targets to hit. If you move around into the blue line, this is uh, known as the a flanking shot. This means you're going to be shooting at the mech from the side. So any front table that is visible from that side, you're going to be hitting. So front, uh, that the leg, the the arm, the torso, etc. That's visible from that side is what you're going to be targeting. Moving on from there is the green, and this is the sweet spot. This is actually shooting the mech in the butt. Essentially, you're going to be shooting in the back arc. Uh, so again, when you're following up, with, when you're doing your melee strikes, if you can do it from the rear, it's great because you've got less things to shoot at because the rear arc table is obviously a lot smaller. Uh, and it will make it quicker for you to take the enemy mechs out. The blue and the green lines do actually have target bonuses, uh, uh, accuracy bonuses as well. So you want to be trying to get that into those arcs because you need every little bit of accuracy you can early on. Uh, there is a couple of variations on these colors. Um, you can, it's, I've not really got the best map for this here, uh, but as you can uh, just about see, that uh, rear target in line there is actually two different shades of green. Uh, the What that means is, again, it's not the best map for this, um, but the uh, you can just about make it out there. If I put that, there's a little actual eye. There's, you'll get a little eye symbol. That means that your line of sight to the enemy mech is obstructed, and that will actually impact your accuracy in that respect. If the line is purple, it means you're in the same arc, but basically means that the uh, line of sight from you to that mech is obstructed, and the line of sight from him to you is also obstructed as well. So try and avoid those if you can. But really, you want blue, you want green, 
Uh, obviously, red is okay. You know, that's going to be your standard one, but blue and, blue and green is where you're going to be want to go from there. And sticking with the theme of targeting is high ground. High ground is good ground. Get your butt up on top of that mountain, on top of that rock. I don't care where it is. If they're in a valley, stay up top. Don't be uh, tempted to move all your mechs down. Any of the ones, again, especially if you've had to take mechs with like AC5s, AC10s, PPCs, etc. Uh, you want these up high. They will gain. Uh, height modifiers are a thing, so you will gain more accuracy being higher than the enemy. The also bonus of this is the enemy is going to have less accuracy shooting back at you because they are lower down trying to shoot up so again this falls back into sort of like the previous point of using your mechs in the right order you want to get you sort of like your, your melee bots down there and into the fray and anyone that's got sort of like the close range weaponry and then any of the guys that have got the sort of the sort of bigger hard hit hitting stuff or you know generally have got the range can sit up top get them up on top of the mountain on top of the rock wherever it needs to be just try and make sure they're higher than the enemy mech and you are going to have a much easier time landing those shots and next up is map terrain uh, there's a multitude of different things you want to be keeping your eye on when you're moving around the map and generally engaging in battle primarily you want to be focusing on things like staying in cover uh, these the cover varies from map to uh, map biome to map biome. So urban, uh, there's like uh, mech, there's rubble and there's trees. Then on the uh, like the Martian biomes, like here you have um, like these sort of like whirlwind clouds. Uh, when you're actually moving, you can see the colored dots actually change. So white is just your generic. This is where you're going to move to. Uh, if it's a green dot, that means that it's a cover. If you can look on the left hand side there, it actually says it's a whirlwind and it provides a 20% damage reduction. Uh, moving on over there, there's the radiation field. This will cause uh, you to take more heat. Uh, over here, these that sort of you kind of really want to avoid. Um, likewise, these orange ones over here, this means it's uh, rough terrain. That means your mech will take bonus stability damage, so you're more likely to fall over. Uh, there's also things on the urban maps like transformers uh, and other things that can explode and will do damage to you as well. They actually be targetable. You'll be, you know, they're kind of eye obvious. You will, you will see a bit. Basically, anything that's like that, there will be a little tooltip that pops up and will tell you what it will do. Uh, things like water obviously will help with cooling in certain situations, not all, but you know, uh, and stuff like that. But also bear in mind, moving in cover and moving through water and things will actually slow your mech down, so it means you will have less evasion. I will go more into all the different. Um, again, this is a topic for a more in-depth topic for another video, but. But for the most part, kind of try and stay in cover if you can. It means you're going to take a 20% damage reduction, uh, and which is obviously a very good thing. Um, it's uh, but only operates from the front and the side. If you take it from the rear, it will actually it does it basically doesn't exist. So like I said, it was all in the tool tip just there. So yeah, make a note of your terrain, what you're walking through, where you're going. Uh, also, another quick little top tip for terrain, uh, dealing with terrain stuff. Uh, this is focused on the urban city maps. But if you are, if the enemy mech is actually stood on top of a building. You're better off shooting the building than you are trying to shoot the mech. Not only are you trying to shoot a mech that's a lot higher up than you, so you're more likely to miss, but if you shoot the building, not only will the building fall down when it's destroyed, the mech will actually take uh, damage when it basically hits the ground as well. So that's extra damage, and it's going to take that damage to the legs. So that makes your getting your kick, kicks in and your salvage much easier. Okay, and for the next tip, I've just jumped over onto my Twitch playthrough just to make things a little bit easier to show you. And that is... Don't use your morale abilities. Now, I know this may sound a little bit counterintuitive, um, but hear me out, there's a very good reason for it. Now, um, obviously, things like Precision Strike, uh, which use your 30 Resolve, may sound really, really good. And they are. They give you a bonus to your accuracy. Um... <clears throat> and stuff like that. However, if you hover over your resolve bar, you will see that when it's it says that when the bar is at 50%, your all of your mech warriors become inspired and they all gain a plus one bonus to 
your accuracy for attacks. Now, the uh, temptation is early on that as soon as you get the precision strike available, or you you know you get your um, your, your vigilance strike uh, vigilance thing available, is to instantly use it and just get that one big good alpha off. Now there is occasions for that. I agree. However, for the most part, you really really want that extra bonus accuracy. Obviously, if the bar is maxed, then you feel free to use it. Um, and then as long as it, but don't let it drop below 50%. Each one of your mech warriors is going to gain another plus one accuracy. And you factor that in on top of the fact that you've, you know, you've, you've optimized your mechs and you've got your, um, you know, your bonus accuracy from your lower arm accurators and you've got your bonus actuator from your, um, you know, because you're using medium lasers and such. You know, that extra plus one accuracy, again, the biggest thing you struggle with early on is accuracy, and anything that you can do to increase that is great. Again, the precision strike is good on a one-hit basis, but try your best not to let your morale to go below 50% and have that extra bonus to your accuracy. It's going to help you out a load. Again, I know a lot of people will go, all right, you know, I can do my precision strike now uh, and use it straight away. And then not even realize that if they just left it where it was, then they would have had, you know, each one of their mech warriors would have had an extra accuracy on. So it's something I strongly advise you take care, you uh, make use of early on in the battle. And with that, we'll move on to our last tip. And sticking uh, just briefly on my Twitch playthrough again as well, the last tip I'm going to give you is don't move your mech pilots about in the mechs too much. And what I mean by this is try and keep the same pilots in the same mechs as much as possible. Obviously, this is going to change when you obviously upgrade your mechs, but there is a thing called pilot affinities. So as a pilot plays, uh, does more missions in uh, that one specific mech he will be he will gain affinities with that mech which will massively help you uh, again this is a um a topic for much more in depth because there is quite a lot of different uh things to go through on it there is posts in the uh, bta discord the links are down below that explains all of this sort of like in a more text-based format uh but basically yeah keep your keep your pilots in the mechs as much as you can until you upgrade them don't worry they don't stick around forever it's not like if you gain all the maximum affinities in affinities in that one specific mech that uh as you uh, you Use that mech pilot up you know they do degrade over time if they're not in that mech um but yeah early on when you're not going to be upgrading your mechs that often until you get something really good uh keep them all in the same mech so assign a mech a pilot and keep that pilot in that mech as much as you possibly can uh it is going to help you massively if you want to check what your affinities are you can basically go into your barracks and if you hover over the uh the character portrait there you can see archangel has pilot affinities for comfortable attuned and brawler in his awesome uh coach has it for his uh, affinities like uh, comfortable in the Arctic Cheetah. Uh, each of these say affinities have different bonuses. Like I said, I suggest you go to the Discord if you want to read that on a more text-based format and you don't want to wait for me to be able to do a video on it. But that is pretty much all that I've got for you today, guys. I hope these have helped you. Again, if they have, please don't forget to leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Obviously, I'm doing the, I'm you know, I'm trying to get to the sort of like the thousand subs uh, on YouTube, so that would be great. And obviously, don't forget to come and see me on twitch again um like i said health permitting i'm there on a monday wednesday and friday links are all down in the below uh, but as from me guys that's me done for today stay safe have a good one and i'll catch you next time Bye bye